Hello learners. In this lecture, we will see what is creep and how practically this creep, creep has to be understood and we'll try to see them. So creep is defined as a time dependent deformation under a constant load. That means it's a long term process what is going to happen and it's going to take time. Hence, we call it as a it's a time dependent deformation. The second is that the creep develops in the concrete rapidly at the beginning and gradually decreases with the time, right? Because initially when you prepare a concrete, my concrete will be a bit soft, isn't it? As time passes on, the concrete is going to gain the strength. So that is why uh, initially when you try to load uh, any concrete structure, the creep will be, that means the deformation is surely going to increase at the early stage. But as and when your concrete is going to gain strength, then that creep is going to come down. That is what you mean by the second point. The third point is that creep is known as a yield time yield or a plastic flow for concrete since it is fluid in nature. Approximately 75% of the ultimate cream in the concrete occurs during the first year. So because in the initial stage of concrete will be gaining strength, hence the creep will be maximum in the first year. The total deformation of a reinforced concrete specimen consists of an instantaneous deformation, the shrinkage deformation and the creep. So the creep strain depends upon the stress in the concrete. It also depends on the age of loading, duration of loading, time and content of type and content of the aggregate that you are going to use, water cement ratio and what is the uh, relative humidity that where your structure is put up. So this is all about the creep and these are the factors on which it depends. Now we'll try to understand this in this way. So to understand this, just imagine you have taken a cylinder. This is a cylinder what you have taken and you're trying to put a compressive force on that. So in this way, and based on that, you're going to get the deformation. So that deformation will try to measure in the lab and all, but how it has to be understood. We'll try to see, just have this imagination in your mind and we'll try to understand this one by one. So <clears throat> initially this is a cylinder what we have, and now I'm going to apply a force on that. So it show, it's written in this way. The figure 3.11 shows a concrete cylinder that is loaded. This is that one. The instantaneous deformation is E1, which is equal to the stress divided by modulus of elasticity. So let us say you have a cylinder and let us say you're loading it, right? And as soon as you load it, what is going to happen? It's going to deform. Obviously, a small deformation is going to happen. This deformation is denoted by E1, which is written here, right? So if the same stress is kept for a period of time and additional strain E2 is developed, due to the creep effect and that can also be recorded. Now, if you refer the figure C, what will happen? Now, let us say initially I've loaded this, right? And after that, if you keep on this lo load for a very long duration of period, let us say uh, two months, three months, one year and so on, because of that additional load, what is going to happen? Again, it's going to get strain. So let us consider that strain to be E2 and it is written here, it is E2. Now, if the load is released, now in the next stage, what I'm going to do, whatever load I've applied, no, I'll try to release that. So the moment I release the load, what will happen? Whatever is my initial strain, that is the elastic strain, which is even that will get recovered, isn't it? That is going to, because since it's elastic in nature, it's going to get re recovered. So that is the reason you can see this even will get recovered here. You can see the term even written here, this much amount of strain is going to get recovered. So this involves your elastic strain along with that, whatever strain you had applied here, that is a creep strain that also will get, that also will be retained back, but not the complete amount to put it in a better way. Let us say due to this elastic strain, there was a deformation of five mm, right? There was a deformation of five mm. And let us say due to the creep strain, there was a deformation of another 10 mm. Now, when you try to take out the load, so what is the total deformation? It is 15 mm, 10 plus 5 is 15 mm. Now, when you take out the load, what is going to happen? This elastic strain of 5 mm, that is going to get recovered. Good. So 5 mm is going to get recovered. Plus, out of this creep strain of 10 mm, entire creep strain will not be recovered. Only certain amount of that creep strain will be recovered. Let us say 4 mm of strain is recovered. So 5 plus, 5 plus 4 is 9. That means 9 mm, let us say. So out of 15 mm, 9 mm strain is recovered. And where is that remaining 6 mm strain? That is a permanent strain that has come in your structure. So that is what it's written here. If the road is, if the load is released, the elastic strain E1 will be recovered in, in addition to some creep strain. 
elastic strain is 5 mm and some amount of creep strain is my 4 mm. So total I'm going to recover 9 mm, but actually how much we had, it was subjected for 15 mm. So 15 minus 9 is 6 mm. So this 6 mm what we have now, it's a permanent deformation. So in this case, they have written E3 is equal to 1 minus alpha into E2, where alpha is a ratio of recovered creep strain to the total creep strain, right? So this is how it has to be understood. Now we'll try to see this in a more practical way and why we need to study this. So these things will not help us in the initial stage. Let us say you put up a structure. It's not that within uh, one month, you're going to see all this deformation in your structure. It's a very long process. It will take five, year, five years, 10 years and all. So that will have a certain effect on your structure. So that is why we need to study all these things, right? But if you're putting up a small structure and all this, this effect will not, uh, you know, uh, help you a lot but when it comes for a high rise buildings and all when we go for a g plus 15 20 25 very high rise towers and all no in that case all these effects will come because the dead load is also huge in that structure so in that case we need to take care of all these things we need to understand all these things and based on that our design will be done right yeah so to put it in a better way we'll try to understand this with, with the help of this graph this will be more interesting and you get a more idea in this so i'm taking time here on the x-axis and I'm taking the deformation that is in y-axis, right? So <clears throat> to put it in a better way, let us say this is a sofa set what you have. So you come and sit on this immediately. Let us say you have come and directly are sitting on this. The moment you sit, a small deformation is going to happen here. It's going to go down, right? And then you come, then you get up from this place. It's going to recover that. So how, why it is going to recover? Because it is an elastic because it is an elastic strain what you applied. So that is why you can see it here. Let us say you came and sat here directly. At time t is equal to zero, there's certain deformation in your structure, right? There's certain deformation, that deformation is. And if you try to get up from here, this, whatever deformation has been formed here, that will be recovered. So that is the, again, if you try to remove the load, it will go back. That is why you can see a straight line here. Now imagine a situation you have come and you have come and you're sitting on this sofa set for a very long period of time. Let us say for at least uh, one, one month or two months, you're sitting on this particular sofa set that what you are a dead load now, right? You are a dead load and you're constantly putting a load on this particular sofa set. Now understand this sofa set in terms of a structure. And this is a dead load. What is applying on what, what is applied on the structure. Now, what is going to happen due to this, due to this uh, dead load, what is going to happen now you see, there is a, as time is increasing, like let us say uh, seven days, 14 days, 20, uh, 14 days, one month, two month, three month, and so on. As time is increasing, the load is also increasing on your structure on the sofa set. So as a result of that, you can see the deformation is increasing, 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 right? Right. So up to here, your deformation is increasing. So one fine day, you, you remember that you want to wake up, right? You are in the wrong place. You want to wake up. Let us say you woke up from that place. So what is what is going to happen? Is it that the complete deformation? Let us say, okay, since you're sit, since you're sleeping on this, uh, let us say this much amount of deformation has happened in this sofa set. So now you woke up from there. Is it that the all the deformation is going to get recovered? No, right? The moment you get up, a small amount of deformation is going to get back. A recovery is going to happen. So this is your elastic recovery, right? Of course, that elastic since. Uh, it is il that elastic recovery, that elastic strain is recovered in nature. So we call that as elastic recovery. That is why you can see a certain amount of deformation has been recovered. That is called as elastic recovery, right? And after that, suddenly when you get up, this elastic recovery will happen. And after that, let us say after one month or another two months, a small recovery is going to happen. So that small recovery with respect to time, it's going to happen. So that is why you can see the graph. No, it's coming with respect to time. It's going in this way. Whereas this elastic recovery will not, will not uh, happen due to time. The moment you get up sudden, that recovery will happen. So with respect to time, there is no movement only directly the deformation. Let me put it in this way. Directly, you can see, you know, from here, sudden decrease has happened in the deformation. With respect to time, it is not, uh, it is not uh, depending on time. As, you, as soon as you get up, that uh, recovery will happen. But this creep recovery, what you have, no? So this creep recovery will happen with respect to time because we are moving in the x-axis, no? It's moving x-axis. So with respect to time, it's going to get that recovery. So that recovery is called as creep recovery. After some time, let us say one month or two months, 
what your surface set might have gone this much deformation this is my elastic after that only this much amount is going to get recovered so this then what is the remaining thing this permanent deformation you can see in the surface set no so this is my permanent deformation so this permanent deformation will have will have this in the structure now to put it in a better way i'm explaining in terms of this but if you see the structure now imagine a structure something like this right so that will be the permanent deformation but it's a, it's a long process it's a time depend hence we call it as a time dependent properties right i hope you got an idea how this uh, uh, particular graph has to be understood so this, this whatever you can see it here no this is my permanent deformation this will never be recovered and this never recovered deformation is called as creep hence we call that hence we call let me go back hence we call creep is defined as a time dependent time dependent deformation under a constant load right yeah yeah i hope you got an idea what is creep how it has to be understood but as i mentioned it's a very long term i mean it's not going to happen suddenly it requires huge amount of time and only then you can appreciate this concept of creep so in the next lecture we'll try to see what all are the factors which affects the creep and we'll try to see fewer the things about shrinkage and all so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you